Hello everybody, this video is on Gibbs free energy and the concept of equilibrium. As you should have learnt from year 11 chemistry, Gibbs free energy indicates the spontaneity of a chemical process or chemical reaction. Gibbs free energy combines the enthalpy change of the reaction as well as the temperature and the change in entropy of the reaction. Gibbs free energy is also defined as the amount of available energy that a system has to do work. And what you need to know in the context of chemistry and equilibrium is if the change in Gibbs free energy of a chemical reaction is less than zero, so if it's negative, then the reaction is spontaneous. It will occur by itself without any intervention. This means it will proceed in the forward direction until it reaches equilibrium. Vice versa, if the change in Gibbs free energy of a chemical reaction is positive or greater than zero, then that reaction is not spontaneous. It will not occur by itself without external intervention. This would mean that the reverse reaction, which would have a negative change in Gibbs free energy, would be spontaneous, and therefore the reversible system will proceed in the reverse reaction until the system reaches equilibrium. In both cases, whether the Gibbs free energy starts off as less than zero or greater than zero, as the system approaches the state of equilibrium, the value of delta G will approach zero. And at equilibrium, the change in Gibbs free energy will become zero. This is the most important point to remember when you're learning Gibbs free energy and equilibrium. Now, what about standard Gibbs free energy, which is often represented by delta G with a little symbol of naught in the superscript? The standard Gibbs free energy is the value of the Gibbs free energy is the value of the change in Gibbs free energy when the reaction occurs under standard conditions. Now by way of review, standard conditions refer to when the substances in the system have a concentration of one mole per liter, it occurs at an atmospheric pressure, one atm or 100 kilopascals, and at a temperature of 295.15 kelvins, which is 25 degrees Celsius. The standard change in Gibbs free energy can be calculated by using a very similar equation as we saw before by using the changing enthalpy under standard conditions minus temperature multiplied by the change in entropy under standard conditions. Now this equation is only useful if you're provided with the values of enthalpy and entropy change under standard conditions. A more useful equation that links between changing Gibbs free energy and the standard change in Gibbs free energy, delta G naught, is the following. Delta G equals to delta G naught plus R, which is the gas constant. This is 8.314, multiplied by the temperature, again in kelvins, times by the natural log of Q. Now, in the context of equilibrium, Q is your reaction quotient. Let's have a look at this equation in more detail. Suppose we have a generic reversible reaction between reactants A and B and products C and D. So the forward reaction will produce C and D by reacting A and B, and in the reverse reaction, C and D will react to reform A and B. So for the reaction quotient, this is then calculated by taking the concentrations of C multiplied by the concentration of D divided by the concentrations of A and B, which are the reactants. If we're dealing with the standard Gibbs free energy, we need to think about standard conditions. And under standard conditions, remember that all substances have a concentration of one mole per liter. So the reaction quotient is simply one times by one in the numerator divided by one times by one, which gives you a net value of one. So under standard conditions, the reaction quotient for all equilibrium systems should be one. And this of course applies to reactions with a stoichiometry that's not just one to one, because if you apply any power to one, you will still get one back. Now, if delta G naught equals zero, that means the change in Gibbs free energy is zero under standard conditions, the reaction that we're dealing with is already at an equilibrium. So this reaction quotient here of one is actually the equilibrium constant, the KEQ of the reaction. So in this case, if the delta G naught is zero, we can say that the KEQ of this equilibrium system is one because the reaction is at equilibrium under standard conditions. When the delta G naught is less than zero, 
that implies the reaction is not at an equilibrium. So understand the conditions, the forward reaction of the system is spontaneous. So it will proceed until the reaction reaches an equilibrium. Now for a reversible system, if the forward reaction proceeds, the reactant concentration will both decrease and the product concentrations will both increase. So understand the conditions, if the reaction quotient is one, and as the forward reaction proceeds, the products will increase and the reaction will decrease, you can expect that by the time this reaction reaches an equilibrium, the equilibrium constant will be greater than one because you will have more products being formed and less reactants as they have been consumed to form the product. So KEQ will be greater than one when the delta G value of this reaction reaches zero. Vice versa, understanding conditions, if the delta G naught of the reaction is positive, greater than zero, that means it is not yet at an equilibrium. This means the forward reaction is non-spontaneous, but the reverse reaction is spontaneous. So it will proceed until the reaction reaches an equilibrium. When the reverse reaction proceeds, the reactants A and B will increase in concentration and the product C and D will decrease in concentration. Understanding conditions, the reaction quotient was one. So by the time this reaction reaches the equilibrium, we will have more reactants than products. So therefore, the equilibrium constant will be less than one. Another way we can analyze this equation between delta G and delta G naught is to look at what happens when the reaction is in fact at an equilibrium by substituting delta G with zero, as that's what we said will happen to the delta G value when the reaction is at an equilibrium. When the reaction is at equilibrium, the reaction quotient also becomes the same value as the equilibrium constant K. So we can make the substitution and say that the delta G naught, which is a standard change in Gibbs free energy, equals to minus RT, the gas constant times by the temperature, times by the natural log of the equilibrium constant. This equation is very useful because we can actually calculate the equilibrium constant of a reaction if we are provided with the standard Gibbs free energy. Vice versa, if we're given the standard change in Gibbs free energy, we can also calculate the equilibrium constant of the reaction. Now, what did we say before? We said that if the standard change in Gibbs free energy is zero, then the equilibrium constant will be one. If the standard change in Gibbs free energy is less than zero, then the equilibrium constant will be greater than one. And lastly, if the standard change in Gibbs free energy is greater than zero, then the equilibrium constant K will be less than one. So just to summarize and highlight the difference between the change in Gibbs free energy and the standard change in Gibbs free energy. Delta G determines the spontaneity of the reaction. Now it determines whether the forward reaction or the reverse reaction is spontaneous or the reaction is already at an equilibrium. Remember that delta G equals zero when the reaction is at an equilibrium. For a reversible system that will eventually reach equilibrium, the value of delta G will slowly approach the value of zero and equal to zero when it reaches that state of equilibrium. However, the delta G value will not provide information on the value of KEQ of the system. On the other hand, the standard change in Gibbs free energy, delta G naught, determines the spontaneity of the reaction when it's at standard conditions. So when the concentrations are one mole per liter, at atmospheric pressure, and at room temperature. And the delta G naught is related to the equilibrium constant as we discussed earlier. Let's quickly go through an example. The standard Gibbs free energy change, delta G naught, for the following reaction is negative 20 kilojoules per mole. Calculate the Gibbs free energy change, delta G, at 298 kelvins when the concentrations of nitrogen dioxide is 0.01 mole per liter and the concentration of dinitrogen tetroxide is 0.1 mole per liter. So for part A, we can calculate the Gibbs free energy by using this equation that links the Gibbs free energy to the delta G naught and the reaction quotient Q of the system. So the delta G naught is minus 20 kilojoules per mole, but we should convert this into the SI unit of joules per mole by multiplying by 1000. The gas constant R is 8.314, and the temperature is given as 298 kelvins. Remember that temperature must be expressed in kelvins, not degrees Celsius. And then finally, the reaction quotient is the product, which is N2O4, 
0.1 mol per liter divided by the concentration of nitrogen dioxide, which is 0.01 squared. Do not forget to square the reactant concentration because there's a 2 as a stoichiometric ratio in front of the nitrogen dioxide. This will give you a Gibbs free energy of minus 2.9 times 10 to the power of 3 joules per mole. Since the Gibbs free energy here is negative, this implies that the reaction is not at equilibrium and the Ford reaction is spontaneous and will proceed until the system reaches an equilibrium. So the value of delta G here will increase and become negative and approach zero as the reaction approaches equilibrium. Part B, calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for the reaction. So again, we can use the same equation as before, but this time we can substitute the Gibbs free energy as zero because it's at equilibrium and therefore the reaction quotient Q is the equilibrium constant. So zero equals to delta G naught plus RT times by ln of KEQ. So zero equals to minus 20,000 joules per mole plus 8.314 times by 298 times by ln KEQ. So ln KEQ equals to 20,000 divided by 8.314 times by 298. And to make the equilibrium constant the subject, we will do e to the power of 20,000 divided by 298 times by 8.314. The equilibrium constant here, as we expected, is greater than 1, which is 3205. So for this reaction, the equilibrium lies very far on the right-hand side, on the product side. This concludes the video on Gibbs free energy and equilibrium. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.